This is the absolute beginner's roadmap to the OSCP updated for 2021. Now, the reason I'm updating this is my opinions have changed quite a bit on various things uh, as, as far as the roadmap that I would recommend goes. And if you stay tuned to the end of the video, I'm actually going to share with you my own personal roadmap as I gear up for this again. So if that sounds interesting to you, stay tuned. Hey, what's up, guys? This is Ryan from Elevate Cyber. And uh, I'm going to break this down just in case uh, any of you guys are joining uh, kind of new here. Maybe you didn't see my uh, my original video that I made uh, a while back on the beginner's roadmap to OSCP. The reason that I want to make this video is that, you know, you have the syllabus here by offensive security, but it can be a bit... It can be a bit misleading as far as what's on the exam, because I'll just tell you that half of the things that are listed here are not actually on the exam. Now, the way that I kind of view it from my own experience in the field and uh, after you know taking this thing on one go around is that the lab, the PWK lab that comes with the exam, right? Um, I would say that that is more of it's more of an all-encompassing thing, right? It's more of like a red team, pen testing and red teamer type of, of course. But the exam itself is more pen testing than anything. The reason that I say that is that uh, on this lab, it's pretty all-encompassing, right? You have like anything from vulnerability scanning to, you know, straight up penetration testing to like stealthy red teamer stuff like ev evading antivirus and uh, things like that. But for the actual exam itself, you don't have to do uh, most of these things. A lot of it is just geared around pen testing. So let's let's just kind of go step by step, and I'll tell you what's on the exam so you know what to focus on when you're really trying to target your learning towards what is going to allow you to get the certification, right? Because that's why we're here. So uh, first of all, they give you, you know, your basic overview of pen testing, and yeah, this is definitely useful, right? Because it's all about your methodology. Uh, that was one of the best pieces of advice that I got is uh, when, when I was doing my own research is uh, from uh, one of the guys that had passed it. He said, basically, OSCP is a test of your methodology. Uh, I have a video on that. So check that one out if you want to learn more of that. But, but this will give you the basic outline of what your sort of mental framework needs to be. And uh, my videos will help that as well. But then getting comfortable with Kali Linux. I have some Kali Linux videos on this channel. But basically what you need to know is that, uh, you know, there's a distribution of Linux that is actually uh, made by offensive security. And uh, it just bundles. Basically what it is is Linux that just comes bundled with a lot of uh, hacking tools. And they'll give you your own Kali Linux distro that's pre-built uh, for the OSCP. And uh, you just need to know how to use Linux, basically, right? Right. You need to know how to use the command line. You need to know how to use a lot of the common tools and command line utilities. Uh, I have a lot of uh, Linux videos uh, that you can watch on this channel that can help you get up to speed with that as well. Uh, I do cover bash scripting as well. But uh, this, this is definitely stuff you will need to know for the exam. I would say like all of these. Now, passive information gathering. Uh... Not not so much on on the uh, exam. So basically, what passive information gathering is, is it is gathering information without even touching your target in any way. So that means not even going to their website, but like you know maybe using Google or some kind of search engine to uh, to get information about the company. In a more realistic sense, maybe you're going on social media and uh, looking up, doing some research on people that work there. Google Maps, you're looking at where their facilities are located, all that kind of stuff. There's none of that. Uh, definitely, if you are in Red Team or Roll, this is something that uh, will be more pertinent for you. And definitely, as well, if you do bug bounties, right? A lot of the information gathering you do will be passive as well. Maybe you do some Google dorking, things like that. But not, you won't really need to know this for the exam. You will need to fo uh, focus more on the active information gathering. So going on the website, browsing around, running Nmap, different things like that, right? Vulnerability scanning, you definitely don't need this for uh, the exam. In fact, you're not allowed to use vulnerability scanners other than uh, Nikto on the exam. Uh, and this is something that 
probably you won't even need to necessarily know uh, for the job as it is. Uh, I do use a little bit of vulnerability scanning with Burt Pro, but that's pretty much the extent of what I do on the job. Now, keep in mind, you can't use Burt Pro on the exam. But there are some roles uh, in security where people, that's pretty much their only job is to run vulnerability scanners on applications, whether it be dynamic scanning, that's scanning the, uh, the web application while it's running, uh, basically how a user would, but you automate all of that and it looks for vulnerabilities uh, automatically, right? Uh, maybe it's static uh, scanning, vulnerability scanning, where you're running a scanner against the source code and it's looking for vulnerabilities in the source code. Maybe it is a vulnerability scan with something like Nessus or Qualys, those tools you might be familiar with, IBM App Scan is another one, uh, where it's actually looking for vulnerabilities on the server. So your privilege escalation vulnerabilities is typically what it would be looking for. Uh, but you won't need this on the exam. So you don't need to worry about that necessarily. Now with web application attacks, you absolutely need to, uh, need to know this stuff. And it's very all encompassing. So to help narrow it down for you guys, when it comes to web application attacks, you wanna focus on the attacks that are not client side attacks, but normally attacks against the server. And uh, normally the ones that can either result in straight up RCE or some kind of file read uh, vulnerability. Cause then you can normally combine that with, if you have an up the ability to upload the files or get your own files on that server in some kind of way, then you can then read that file and execute it to get your shell because that's what it's all focused on. It, it, you know, in your CTFs, you're focused less on like client side stuff, like cross site scripting, cross site request forgery, all that stuff. While it can be good. And even in some cases, cross site scripting can lead to RCE typically in a, in, in your CTFs and certainly in the OSCP exam, you're not going to encounter that. You're, it's mostly you're going to be looking for things. Uh, just give you guys a few uh, things to focus on off the top of my head. Uh, SQL injection, which would be manual SQL injection because you cannot use SQL map. Uh, what else? File upload especially is one. I'm probably going to forget some here. This is just off the top of my head. Uh, XML external entities injection, XXE. Uh, what else? Uh, any kind of IDOR. That, that kind of stuff, right? Uh, LFI, RFI. So, but you definitely need to know a lot of web application attacks. Uh, and then buffer overflow. You're guaranteed to have one buffer overflow exam on, or er, box on the exam. So you absolutely need to know this, both Linux and Windows, because the one you get on the exam, it could be Linux and it could be Windows. So it's kind of a 50-50 toss up there. So you just need to know all of them. A lot of people are intimidated by it. In my experience, there's nothing to be intimidated by. These are actually kind of, a, they're, they're basically freebie boxes once you actually... Uh, learn them. It, it's kind of weird at first, but once you get the hang of them, uh, trust me, it's not that difficult. And one of the strategies, a little bonus tip for you guys, one of the strategies that I've heard, and it makes a lot of sense to me when I take this exam again, this is what I'm going to be doing, is that you fire off all of your scans, like your auto recon or whatever you're using, right? You, you fire off all your scans and while you're waiting on those to complete, because they're going to take a while, then that's when you go and do your buffer overflow box because you know what the attack vector is. There's no rabbit hole with that. It's like, okay, this is uh, the application that's running. Do a simple search. Okay, it's vulnerable to buffer overflow. Now let me craft my exploit, do all that. And by the time you finish your buffer overflow box, normally a lot of your, you have a lot of scan data, then you can go and uh, enumerate further on the other boxes. So a little bonus tip for you guys. Uh, client side attacks, you don't need to know this. Basically, this is attacks against other users. Uh, this will be on the lab, of course. Everything on this list is in the lab, but on the exam, you won't be doing any kind of attacks against other users, most likely, from what I've seen and heard so far. Uh, so you don't really need to know this for the exam. And this is more of a red team thing, too. Uh, you, they, the red team does a lot of client side attacks, uh, whether it's through social engineering or you know, in the rare case nowadays, more rare case, uh, exploiting a vulnerable browser or something like that. Um, most of, uh, most of the penetration testing stuff is focused on, you know, penetration testing against technology rather than processes and people. That's more of a red team thing, right? Uh, locating public exploits. Absolutely. You'll do this all the time. And you, if you've watched my content, you've probably seen me do this a number of times as well. 
And of course, with OSCP, almost nothing ever works uh, out right out of the box, as anyone who has taken it uh, will probably be able to tell you. So fixing exploits, definitely something you need on the exam. File transfers, need those all the time as well so that you can get your files on the server to maybe look for some privilege escalation vulnerabilities or maybe a kernel exploit or, you know, whatever it is you're trying to do. Uh, exfiltrate data even perhaps. On the exam, probably not so much with the data exfiltration, just, uh, you know, getting your exploits on there or your scanning additional uh, enumeration, if you will. But uh, yeah, antivirus evasion, you won't really need this for the exam at all. If you want to be a red teamer, this is something you need to know. And uh, you need, every red team uh, needs one uh, good antivirus evader on the team in order for that team to be successful and to do what it does effectively. But as a pen tester, you, you don't even need to consider this because as a pen tester on the job, you can be as loud as you want. You're just trying to test the technology. So typically that's what you'll find from a penetration testing standpoint. And certainly on the exam, uh, th this is part of the reason why I say that the exam feels more penetration tester-ish, uh, whereas the lab is kind of all encompassing. It covers penetration testing and red teaming and some vulnerability scanning stuff as well. But yeah, you definitely don't need this on the exam. So I wouldn't worry. Uh, privilege escalation. Absolutely. You know, a lot of times, and pretty much every, I'm pretty sure on every exam box, of course, I don't know this for a fact, but I'd be willing to bet on every exam box, once you get your initial shell, you're going to need to do some form of privilege escalation. So you'll need to learn a lot of privilege escalation techniques for both Linux and Windows. And password attacks, uh, yeah, absolutely, brute forcing and things like that. Mostly, you're going to be brute forcing uh, different logins and services. Now, you got to be careful that you don't uh, lock out accounts and things in the real world. And uh, if you do that on an exam box, you can revert. So you can be a little bit more aggressive with this than I would on a real world scenario. But uh, yeah, definitely know how to do your brute forcing uh, for various uh, protocols and things like that. No redirection or tunneling. Uh, will be needed on the exam. This is in the lab environments. You can uh, pivot to different networks and things like that. And it is, once again, more of a red team thing. Penetration testers, typically, uh, they don't do much pivoting or anything like that, uh, from my experience, at least. And so on the exam as well, you won't really need to uh, worry about this. But if you're going to be a red teamer, definitely need to learn some of this. Uh, but normally, the way you're going to be doing that, it would be with some C2 framework, uh, like Cobalt Strike or Empire uh, or, you know, pretty much any of the uh, C2 frameworks. So, um, yeah, I don't, I don't know how the uh, the new 2020 labs are yet because I, uh, I haven't gone at those yet. But uh, I think it would be pretty cool if uh, it shows you how to do some of that stuff with uh, PowerShell Empire and, and different things like that. But uh, then Active Directory Attacks uh, is something that they've added newly to the 2020 update. Uh, before there wasn't any, uh, there wasn't much to any Active Directory stuff. Really, really cool, but at the same time, uh, not on the exam. So definitely pay attention to this kind of stuff. If you want to be a red teamer, this is absolutely essential to to understand Active Directory, the ins and outs, as much as possible. So you want to, you want to, just because it's not on the exam, don't ignore it by any means. But when you're focusing on the exam, you don't have to f so much worry about about this. You know, if you want to really target your uh, your study into only what you need to know for the exam, uh, Active Directory will not be on there uh, as far as like doing advanced pivoting or anything like that. Because from what I understand, uh, reading over the uh, exam material is that uh, you know provided publicly by Offensive Security is that uh, they haven't made much to any updates on the exam boxes themselves. Rather, uh, just the labs for right now. So I don't think that uh, you need to even worry about this on the exam. Now, Metasploit Framework, this is kind of, at, this one is a little bit at your discretion, I guess, because you can only use it once. Some people opt to not use it at all. You don't have to use it, of course. Uh, but I, th I would say it's beneficial to at least understand how it works. It's, it's pretty simple to understand. So just spend a little bit of time learning the basis, the basics of it. And then if you need to use it on the exam, you can call upon it once and uh, just do what you need to do. Maybe save yourself some time, make life easier for yourself. Uh, PowerShell Empire. Uh, nope. Uh, this is uh, more of uh, Active Directory Red Team thing. It's a C2 framework, a command and control framework. 
uh, definitely cool to know. And I, I'm really excited to learn uh, PowerShell Empire uh, and practice it in the PWK once I uh, start up on this again. But uh, yep, basically from here, they give you an overview of how it all works. And of course, you have the labs and you have a ton of boxes to practice on there. So definitely take full advantage of that. And so now if you stuck around to this point in the video, you know, thanks a lot. Uh, I will now go over my personal roadmap, my personal strategy that I'm using uh, on my next attempt here. And this is based off of a lot of independent research that I've done from, you know, different content creators that were successful on the OSCP that I've watched. And uh, so this is by no means my own idea. So I don't want to uh, I don't want to present it as if it is. Uh, a lot of this was influenced by Jason Sex. So shout out to that guy uh, if you're watching. That's pretty awesome. Uh, but he he actually gave a recommendation, and after looking at all this uh, all this material here and my own experience and trying out some of the uh, platforms he recommended, I would definitely say that it seems like this is the way to go for me. So this is absolutely what I'm doing. Back when I made the older video, I did not know about platforms such as TryHackMe. I actually don't think uh, that even existed. Definitely the offensive security proving grounds did not exist back when I was first taking the OSCP. So now that I know about them, I would have to say that uh, I would recommend that, uh, you know, your roadmap, start it before you even start going for OSCP. Now, with that being said, don't be one of those people. Please don't be one of those people that uh, you're like, okay, well, I have to do this, this, and this, and then I can start. And then you do those things and you're like, well, then I need to do this, this, and this, and then I can start. And then you never end up starting. So definitely make sure that you are taking action on the journey and not just learning things at random. But my personal strategy is going to be to do try hack me. And this is a per recommendations of uh, other content creators, right? I'm going to be doing the paths on uh, try hack me. Let me, let me just go ahead and pull that up. But I, um, I'm going to be doing the offensive pen testing path and the web fundamentals. I'm going to complete both of these all the way through. And then I'm going to go on to the offensive security proving grounds and I'm going to route 20 to 30 boxes on there. Uh, this is be a combination of the play and practice boxes on there. And uh, once I do that, I'm going to go ahead and register for a two-month lab. And uh, pretty much I'm, I'm going at this stuff daily. This is going to be my strategy, my roadmap uh, to get there. And uh, for you guys, if you saw, I've, I've been creating some content around Hack the Box too. So I'm going to be doing a little bit of uh, the TJ Null OSCP-like boxes list. But that's just something extra. I'm not going to worry about completely going through all of those things because... Back in the day, Hack the Box was, in my opinion, the best practice tool for it, but there's better options out there now. Hack the Box is never bad, but a lot of the boxes are not exactly what you would call OSCP-like, so it's definitely better to do the Proving Grounds and uh, try Hack Me if you want a little bit more handheld experience, or in my case, why not do both? So that is my roadmap. So if you've stuck along to this far in the video, check out my playlist on what you need to know for OSCP. It would definitely be a really good uh, supplement for you guys. Uh, and also be sure to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and hit the like button, help get this video out there to some people that might need a little bit of help and guidance as they prepare for their OSCP. I will see you guys right over in those videos. Thanks for watching.